Yo, what's going on, bro? My name is Jordan McLeod, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to look max and become a handsome and attractive man step by step. So be sure to stay throughout this entire video because this is gonna be an actual in-depth, full-on looks maxing guide. I'm gonna be giving you the tips, the strategies, the products, the resources, the fitness routine, the type of clothes I wear. I'm gonna be giving you every single thing that I've used, the things that I've done to looks max and become the most handsome and attractive version of my Myself, and I want you to leave this video knowing that you have everything that you need in order to become the most attractive and handsome version of yourself. So if that sounds good, let's go ahead and let's dive into the video. So right here, I have the full looks maxing guide to becoming a handsome and attractive man step by step. And I broke down the full looks maxing guide in five different pillars. So the first pillar is going to be the face. The second pillar is going to be the body. The third pillar is going to be fashion and accessories. The fourth pillar is going to be grooming and hygiene. And then the fifth and final pillar is going to be the action steps and how to implement every single thing that I cover in this full looks maxing guide. Let's go ahead and let's dive into how to looks max your face. So when it comes to the face, I believe this is going to be the most important aspect of your overall look simply because people are going to be looking at your face the most. So you want to do everything that you can to make it as attractive as possible. So the first step is that you want to get lean. The leaner you are, the better looking your face is going to be simply because you're going to be able to reveal a lot more of those attractive facial features like cheekbones, hollow cheeks, and a strong and defined sharp jawline. And the way to do that is by leaning down and getting anywhere from the 8 to 12% body fat percentage. That's low enough to reveal those attractive facial features, but also sustainable enough for you to stay at that level of leanness for a long time. Then the second thing that you want to do is facial exercises. And some of the things that you can do is mewing. So mewing is when you rest your tongue at the roof of your mouth. And this is simply going to allow your jawline and your facial facial features to project forward a little bit more, really strengthen and redefine themselves. But when it comes to mewing, you got to make sure that number one, you do it correctly. And in order to see results, you have to do it for a long period of time consistently. I would also suggest that you do facial exercises like raising your cheekbones up for a certain amount of reps or extending your jawline out for a certain amount of reps. And a good person to check out that dives deeper into this is First Man. He talks a lot about facial exercises. So after this video, I would go ahead and look at his channel so you can learn more about facial exercises. But what I believe will be the easiest strategy that you can implement as soon as today is chewing mastic gum. This is what that is right here. This is the natural mastita, which is just a very hard flavorless gum that really gives your jaw and your face a workout, just like as if you're working your body out in the gym. And this is going to make your jawline more defined, sharper, and really bring out more of those facial features. And I would suggest that you chew mastic gum anywhere from 30 minutes a day to two hours a day. And you want to do this for a long period of time if you want to see results because it, it takes a while for your facial features to change and mold into a different look. So this is something you're going to have to do for the long term. But as you're leaning down, you're chewing massive gum every single day, I'm sure in six to 12 months, you're going to look very different compared to when you first started. You can get mastic gum on Amazon. Just type in mastic gum and a lot of options will come up. But another strategy that you can implement to have that lean and defined look is by lowering your carb intake and your sodium intake because if you eat a lot of carbs, a lot of sodium, and you're not hydrating yourself, your face is going to be round and puffy because of all the water that it's retaining. And what I found that actually works and gets rid of the excess water retention and sodium intake is dandelion extract root. And this is a natural diuretic and it's really good at flushing out toxins, the excess sodium and water retention. When I take dandelion extract root at the beginning of the day, by the time the evening or the nighttime rolls around, my face just looks so lean, slim, defined, and crisp, especially when it comes to date nights. I'm definitely going to be using this. So I would highly suggest that you use dandelion extract root so you can flush out all that excess sodium and water so you're keeping your face as lean and as defined as possible. You obviously can't have an attractive face without having a really good skincare routine. And the two products that are going to give you the most bang for your buck and deliver 80 to 90% of your results will be an SPF and retinol. And SPF and retinol are simply going to help slow down the aging process of your skin, help prevent skin cancer, sun damage, especially with the retinol is going to help smooth out fine lines, wrinkles, and make your face a lot more youthful. And if you're using this every single day, you're going to age gracefully. Your skin's going to look very healthy, rejuvenated, even as you get into your 30s, 40s, 50s, and so on. With that being said, we're going to dive into my exact skincare routine, and I'm going to show you the exact products that I use. And 
I split my routines up into two parts. So I have my day routine and my night routine. So let's go ahead and let's dive into my day routine. When it comes to my day skincare routine, the first thing I do is I use OxyPass to get rid of any dirt and oils that I have on my face. And these are just simple circular white pads of alcohol and you just rub them on your face and you get rid of dirt and oils. Now, from this point, these are the things that I do when I'm in the shower. Once I get into the shower, I wash my face with CeraVe Renewing and SA Cleanser. And this is simply an exfoliator and I exfoliate my face two to three times a week. Once I do that, I'll follow up with the Burt Bees Deep Cleansing Cream. And this is a really good cleanser to use to clean and rejuvenate your face. It also gives a nice cooling sensation. So my face just feels refreshed because of the cooling sensation. And this is what I use every single day. Then once I'm out of the shower, I use the brand V Derm Beauty. It's SPF 50. And this is what I use every single day to put on my face, my neck and hands, because you don't want to just put SPF on your face because your skin will look really good. But if you're not putting SPF on your hands and your neck, they're going to look more aged than your face. It's just not going to be a good look. Then I use the Liliana branded retinol, and this is going to help prevent wrinkles, fine lines, and slow down the aging process. And I just put one dab on my forehead, one dab on my cheek, a dab on the other cheek, put one on my chin, and then I put a couple dabs on my neck and I just rub everything in. And then I'll follow up with a Liliana anti-aging eye cream moisturizer. And I just take dime sizes of the Liliana eye cream and I just dab it right here, dab another right there. And I just rub it in all in this area, all in this area. It helps with getting rid of the wrinkles, the eye bags, dark circles, all that stuff. And then I use four drops of Up Circle Face Serum to boost collagen, keep my skin firm, get rid of dark dark spots and make my skin glow. This is just going to make your face pop like none other. And I believe based on what I read on the bottle that it's good for like facial hair and your actual hair. So this is a really good product. It has some coffee um, and rosemary ingredients in it. So it smells like coffee. I'm a big coffee drinker. So that's a plus. But I use this in the morning to start up my day, especially if I'm going out, I'm going to the bar with friends or I'm going out on a date. I'll definitely use this because this is just going to make my skin look really freaking good. And then lastly, I use the aloe infused face and body cream to moisturize, nourish, and soothe my face. And I look at this as a moisturizer that I use to seal everything that I use previously as far as the products go. And it makes my face look more natural and just glow. And I just feel good when I use it. That was the skincare routine that I use during the day. This is my night skincare routine. And it's pretty similar to the day routine. So again, I'll use OxyPass to get rid of dirt and oils. Then I'll use the Burt Bees Deep Cleaning Cream when I'm in the shower to wash my face. Then I use use the Liliana Retinol and the Liliana Anti-Aging Eye Cream. You use these two products twice a day. So one time in the morning, the other time at night. And then the thing that I do differently that I don't do in the morning routine, but I do at night is I use this topical vitamin E skin oil. And this is by Finest Nutrition, I believe. And this just really helps with the collagen production of your skin and makes your skin a lot more elastic, firm, youthful. So I use this every single night. And then lastly, I use the aloe and fusion face and body cream to top everything off. That's my nightly skincare routine. But now that you saw my day skincare routine and my night skincare routine, we have to talk about facial hair because facial hair is like men's makeup. Women have their makeup, facial hair is ours. And I found that especially as you get lean, you start to strengthen your facial features with orthotropics and your jawline is really coming in. Facial hair is just going to accentuate it and complement it even more. So what I personally like to do is I like to have a low to mid double on my cheeks, as you can see right here, but I'll leave an extra bit of chin hair on my chin because personally for me, I don't have a forward projecting chin. So to give off the illusion that I do, I'll go ahead and I'll leave a thicker chin hair right here, which is just going to make your jawline look more elongated, lean and slim. Now you may be watching this and you may not be lean yet, or you may not have strong facial features yet. What I would suggest that you do then is that you grow out a thicker and fuller beard and get it lined and shaped up to make your face look more defined. So in the meantime, while you have that thicker beard that gives off the illusion that you have a strong jawline, you can actually be leaning down doing the orthotropics to actually build up that strong jawline and developing those facial features that we were talking about. Now, if you're also like me, 
I couldn't really grow facial hair other than like my mustache and my chin hair. So if you're someone that has a hard time growing facial hair as well, what I would suggest that you use is Rogaine, which is basically minoxidil. And this helps revitalize your hair follicles and grow in facial hair. It's actually meant for the top of your head and you can use this as well as a hair loss preventative measure. As far as using minoxidil, I use minoxidil in the corners of my hairline, but you can also use Rogaine or minoxidil to grow your facial hair. It took me around six to 12 months consistently of applying minoxidil twice a day to start growing facial hair. But what I would suggest for you is that not only do you use minoxidil to grow facial hair if you can't grow it already, but use a derma roller to really accelerate the process to which you grow that facial hair because it's just going to make it grow in a lot thicker, fuller at an accelerated rate. The derma roller is these little miniature needles that it's like poking holes in your skin and making it easier for facial hair to grow in. So that's facial hair. What a lot of people don't talk about that's important if you want to have an attractive face is your eyebrows. As you can see, I have dark, thick eyebrows and eyebrows play a very key role into your facial attractiveness. Even though eyebrows are very subtle, they make a big difference. If you take away someone's eyebrows, like they look absolutely crazy. So having thick eyebrows is very key if you want to have an attractive face. So if you have thin eyebrows, what I would do is you got to thicken them up. And this is the foam version of minoxidil. They have almost like serum drop versions of minoxidil, but I use a foam. That's just my preference. But you can just take this little foam, put it on your finger and just go like this, rub the minoxidil in your eyebrows just like that. And you can use the derma roller if you want to accelerate the growth of your eyebrows. But you can also use Jamaican black castor oil, which is good for not only thickening them up, but supposedly Jamaican black castor oil makes your eyebrows even darker, which will give it a more fuller look too. I would do this at least at the end of the night and then you can use a derma roller to help accelerate the hair growth. And then I would also be shaping up your eyebrows. You don't have to get any crazy arches or anything like that. But what I do is I line up my eyebrows a little bit. When I say line up, I more so just make sure I, I get rid of any excess hair growth on the sides of my eyebrows and arches, keep them more clean that way. So that's what I would suggest that you do to thicken up your eyebrows. So now we're moving on to teeth. It's so important that you get your teeth straight and that you whiten your teeth. Teeth health, having white teeth, having straight teeth is not only an attractive feature, but people are going to warm up to you a lot more when you have nice teeth. People are going to treat you better just having nice teeth alone. So if your teeth aren't straight, if they're crooked or if they're yellow, then what I would suggest that you do is get some type of Invisalign or like an invisible retainer that you can wear for six to 12 months or even two years, maybe depending on how long you need to wear them. But whatever you can do, I would set a budget aside for you to invest into straightening your teeth and then you want to white them. And what you can use to whiten your teeth is the Crest Brilliance Whitening Two-Step Toothpaste, which is this right here. This is just, this purple one is just a regular toothpaste. And then this step two is the whitening toothpaste that you can use. You can also use the Crest 3D White Strips. I know those are very popular. I've used them in the past and they work. And if you just get your teeth straight and if you whiten them, you're gonna boost your facial attraction by at least like one or two points. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about hairstyle. So I would personally suggest that you get a hairstyle that you like and that suits your face. So you can look at a celebrity that you look up to or an influencer that you look up to or someone that has similar features as you, the same race as you, just to get a good idea of what would look good for you. But honestly, I don't think anyone can go wrong with a fade. I feel like a fade, no matter what your race, is gonna look good on every man. Now, obviously there are hairstyles that fit people's head shape and face shapes, but I believe by leaning down, your face is obviously gonna get a lot more slimmer. And then you pair that up with a fade. Well, a fade with a lean face is just gonna make your face look more elongated. If you look up right here, like you see how I already have a lean face, I have good facial features, but then on top of the fade right here, my face just looks a lot slimmer and a lot leaner. And this is a drop fade. So usually I get a low drop fade. This is more like a mid to high drop fade, but usually I ask my barber for a low drop fade. That's what I would suggest that you get. So here 
here's my hair styling routine. So when it comes to my hair, listen, I get my hair cut every two weeks, especially since I'm a mixed race man. I'm black and white. My brother's watching this right now. Like the brothers know if we go beyond two weeks of not getting our hair cut, we get to that two week to three week plus range where we haven't gotten a cut, we start to look crazy. So in order to look fresh, I like to get my hair cut every two weeks. And I would suggest that you do the same regardless of what your race is. Or if you're on a tight budget, I would at least be getting a haircut once a month. Anywhere from two to three weeks is a sweet spot. Then the second thing that I do is I wash my hair with Intelligent Shampoo. That's the brand. And it's a ketoconazole shampoo. So it's really good just to help prevent hair loss, um, thicken my hair, help produce growth. It's also really good for volumizing my hair. And I use this two to three times a week, no more than that. And this is actually the brand by Derek from More Place, More Dates. This is his actual brand. I've been using it for I think over six months now, just as a preventative measure from hair loss. And then the second thing that I use is I wash my hair with shea moisture conditioner, especially with my curls. This is a really good conditioner to use. You can use a different conditioner. You don't have to use shea moisture. I believe, don't quote me, but I I believe they have different conditioners and hair products for people that don't have curly hair. I could be wrong, but I think they do. But if not, it's fine. I would suggest that you look at a really good conditioner that is good for your hair type. And then when it comes to styling, the first product that I use is the product called Revive by Lush. And this is a really good product. And this is a really good moisturizer. It really enhances my curls as well as it gives my hair a good smelling scent. This is probably my favorite hair product ever. And this doesn't work just for people with curly hair, but with anyone with any type of hair texture, this is a really good product that I would highly suggest that you get when it comes to styling your hair. And then the second hair product that I use is the Echo Styling Gel. And this is the Argan Oil Hair Styling Gel that I actually use. This is really good to add shine and moisture to my hair. And it's not like one of those gels that get really hard and crusty. Then lastly, what I'll use is I'll use this Cantu Oil Sheen. And it's a leave-in conditioner spray and really makes my curls pop and look more coiled. That's my hair styling routine. Then lastly, when when it comes to looks maxing your face and making it as attractive as possible, more specifically on the hair aspect of things, because hair is a very important key factor to your overall facial attractiveness. Now, yes, it's not your actual face, but hair still plays a role to how people perceive your face. And I bring that up because you've been hearing me mention how I'm doing certain things to be proactive against hair loss is by having my own hair loss prevention routine. And one of the things that I do is I take biotin supplements every single day. I use that ketoconazole shampoo that I told you about earlier. Then I use minoxidil and I take a little bit of minoxidil and I put it on the corners of my hairline. And then I use this product called My Hair Repair Serum by Evan Alexander. And this is a really good product that you can use to regrow your hair and rejuvenate it. It has all natural ingredients and it's really good. And again, I just use these products as hair loss prevention because if you can be proactive against hair loss, then obviously that's going to be the best route. So that was the first pillar being the face and looks maxing the face. Let's go ahead and let's jump into the body. So as you can see right here on this picture, like this is how I used to look guys. Like I didn't just come out the womb looking the way that I do now. I had to put in the work to develop this. Yes, I have good genetics, but good genetics are only good if you actually maximize them, which requires work. And when it comes to having an attractive body, ideally you want an aesthetic, lean, proportionate V-shaped physique with muscle mass. And scientifically, the V-shaped physique and being lean and having proportionate muscle mass is the most attractive physique for women. This was a girl that messaged me on Hinge and she was like, cause you are like my fantasy guy for real, dark, handsome, perfect skin, jawline, like all muscles and a freaking apex pack so effing hot. She found me so attractive that she was imagining an eight pack on me. That's hilarious. But this goes to show you how important it is to have that lean aesthetic V-shaped physique because women absolutely love it. Because a lean, strong V-shaped physique, it signals strength, it signals health, the ability to protect, to provide, and pass on healthy genes to your offspring. So that's why it's important to have an aesthetic physique, especially if you want to be the most handsome and attractive version of yourself. It doesn't mean you have to be a pro bodybuilder looking like you're going to step on the stage or be some type of fitness model. That's not the case, but you want to develop this type of physique in the best way possible for you. With that being said, I'm actually going to dive into the exact muscle groups that will play a role into you building that physique. So here are the muscle groups, the shoulders, building the broad shoulders. That's really going to be the top part of that V-shaped physique. The second part is the upper chest. So just having that plate of armor look like how you can see my upper chest right now, you got to have that. That's going to be very key into kind of building that 
that Greek god physique. The third is traps, having traps and looking a lot more masculine and a lot more dominant with the traps. Then the fourth is the lats, which is really going to be the lower end of the V-shaped physique, having abs, of course, six pack abs or eight pack abs, and then building that neck area, which is going to make you look more strong, bigger, and overall just more masculine and really complete that V-shaped physique. Now, I know you're probably thinking like, Jordan, you didn't even talk about legs. And that's because at least in my experience, when it comes to men and women, what we find attractive about each other's physique is completely opposite of one another. So women look at our upper bodies attractive, and that's just because of the functional use of our upper bodies, especially in the hunting and gathering days. Like we had to use our upper bodies to lift, to hunt. And with women, we look at more of like their lower bodies as the attractive part of their overall look. So women are gonna pay attention a lot more to your upper body than lower body. Now that doesn't mean neglect your lower body. You guys still work out your legs, but as long as your legs are sleek, they're strong, and they're proportional, it to your body. That's all that matters. And I even like dated women who are into fitness that follow Chris Bumstead. It's assumed that they're going to be the ones that are going to pay attention a lot more to those kind of things. And I've had women tell me all the time, like my legs are fine. My legs aren't huge by any means. I'm not a big guy, but they didn't really care so much about my legs per se, but they really like my upper body. So that just goes to show that at least in the eyes of women, do things for yourself. Yes. But I'm just saying when it comes to looking attractive to women, they care more about the upper body aesthetic than the lower body aesthetics. So those are the muscle groups that you want to focus on. Let's talk about the best exercises to achieve an aesthetic lean physique. So when it comes to shoulders, you definitely want to be doing overhead press and you can do either dumbbell or barbell. I love doing the standing military press. Those will definitely put hair on your chest and turn you from a boy into a man, as well as you can do Arnold presses and then of course lateral raises to make your shoulders a lot more round and capped. When it comes to the upper chest, you want to hit incline bench. And you can do either dumbbell, barbell, or machines. When it comes to traps, you want to do shrugs and you can do dumbbell shrugs, barbell shrugs, or use the barbell attached to the Smith machine to do this. When it comes to building out your lats and that back, I believe by far that weighted chin ups and or weighted pull ups are going to give you the most bang for your buck. But you can also do lat pull downs as well if you're not at the ability to do weighted pull ups. But I would definitely work your way up to those because the weighted pull ups, the weighted chin ups are really going to help explode that V shaped physique. When it comes to abs. Now abs, you're not going to really see your abs until you get to that eight to 12 body fat percentage that we were talking about. But when it comes to actually building your core and the ab muscles, what I personally do is I do hanging knee raises where I'll take my knees and bring them together and go back and forth, bring them to each side. And then I also use the ab wheel roller. That's what I do with abs. And then lastly, when it comes to neck, I do neck curls and you can do neck curls and reverse neck curls. You can take anywhere from a 10 to 25 pound plate, get like some type of towel or blanket, rest it over over the top of your head and just bring in your neck like that. That's the standard neck curl. And then the reverse neck curls when you're like laying down on the bench, you have like your stomach to the bench and then you take the weight, you put it on top of the back of your head and then you just lift your head up like that. And that's a reverse neck curl. So those are the muscle groups and those are the exercises that you can do to build up those muscle groups so that you can develop the lean aesthetic V-shaped physique. Now we have to figure out how can you specifically start building out your physique because depending on your body type, you're going to have to go about things a little bit differently. Whether you're fat or skinny, that's going to determine whether or not you need to be in a calorie deficit to lean down or you have to be in a calorie surplus so that you can start to put on lean mass. So that being said, if you have a lot of body fat that you need to lose, here's a simple formula that you can follow. Take your current body weight right now and multiply it by 15. 15 is just the number of calories that you burn per pound of body weight if you're a moderate active person. Like you get at least like 30 minutes of exercise per day. And that could even just be you like walking around in the office or in a store or outside or whatever, but you're at least moderately active. That total number is gonna be your calorie maintenance level. And then what you wanna do from there is that you wanna subtract 400 from your calorie maintenance level. And that's how many calories that you're gonna consume per day. So you're gonna be in a 400 calorie deficit per day, which the reason why you wanna be in a 400 calorie deficit per day is because that's just gonna make it a lot more sustainable 
uncomfortable for you. Now you're going to lose probably three to four pounds of fat per month, which doesn't seem like a lot, but over a period of time, that's definitely going to add up. And this is just going to make it so that you can sustainably and consistently lose weight over a period of time. And then when it comes to your protein intake, you want to multiply 0.8 grams of protein by your body weight. And that's going to be your total protein intake that you consume per day. So for example, I weigh around 167 pounds. So I'm going to take 167 pounds times 15, and that's going to equal 2,505 calories per day, which is my maintenance level. Subtract 400 from that, and that equals 2,105. And that's going to be my daily calorie intake. And then when it comes to my protein intake, I'm just going to take 167 again, multiply it by 0.8 grams of protein, and that's going to be 133.6 grams of daily protein intake. Those are the only numbers that you need to focus on are the calorie intake and the protein intake. That's it. For my homies who are skinny or skinny fat, like how I used to be very skinny, this is the protocol that you want to follow. So you're going to want to be in a calorie surplus because you have to start putting on muscle mass. And the only way to do that and start gaining weight is by being in a calorie surplus. And I know I didn't break this down earlier in the calorie deficit, but in order for you to lose weight, you have to be in a calorie deficit. So you have to eat less calories than your body burns. But if you're skinny or you're skinny fat, then you need to be in a calorie surplus so you can start building that lean muscle mass. When it comes to being in a calorie surplus, what you want to do is, is take your body weight and multiply it by 15. And again, that's going to be your total calorie maintenance level. And then you simply just want to add 200 to your calorie maintenance level. And that's how many calories that you're going to consume per day. So you're going to be in a daily 200 caloric surplus, which will allow you to build lean muscle mass with minimal fat gain. You're slowly but gradually putting on lean muscle mass and weight and building that V-shaped physique. And then when it comes to your protein intake, you just want to multiply 0.8 grams of protein times your body weight. And that's going to be the total protein intake that you need to consume per day. And I have an example laid out. Again, taking my body weight 167 times 15 equals 2505. That's my maintenance. Add 200 calories to that. Now I'm eating 2705 calories per Per day. That's my daily calorie intake. And then when it comes to the protein intake, I want to take 167 pounds times 0.8 grams of protein, which is going to be 133.6 grams of daily protein intake. So with that being said, if you want to actually see success in building an attractive, lean, proportionate V-shaped physique, then you need to be tracking your lifts and you need to be tracking your calories every single day. So if you want to either start losing weight or putting on weight, regardless, you need to track your calories. The app that I use is called the Lose It app. This is a really great app that you can use to track your calories. And then when it comes to tracking your lifts, you want to use the Strong app. This is the app that I use to track my lifts. I can just log the workouts that I'm using, put in the weights, put in the numbers, etc. And I'm able to constantly be in a state of progressive overload. And as long as you track your calories and your lifts over a period of time, you're going to transform your body for the better. I promise you, you just have to do the work and stay consistent. For cardio and to maintain your lean, I would recommend that you walk 10,000 to 12,000 steps per day and pick up like a martial art like boxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, or some type of fun activity or sport so that you're able to sustain that level of activity for the long term, which will help you stay lean a lot more effortlessly. And then as far as the diet goes, I'm just going to be frank with you. I don't eat a strict diet. I don't eat like the chicken and broccoli and all that bland stuff. I don't do that because it's not sustainable. So what I would recommend is that you eat a diet that is sustainable and enjoyable for for you. And simply, you just want to eat a well-balanced diet. So for me, I just eat lean meats, healthy fats, carbs. Like I eat salmon, I eat steak, I eat eggs. I love pasta. I, I do like vegetables as well. I like potatoes. That's the type of food that I eat. And then I do like to indulge in ice cream. I do like to indulge in chocolate and candy because if you try to eat a strict diet, it's only going to work for such a period of time until you burn out and then go off on the deep end. So I would just use the Pareto principle, 80% healthy foods and then 20% junk food. That's what I do. And then I also drink a gallon of water a day and I focus on getting seven to nine hours of sleep per night for recovery. That will also help with just improving your looks and stuff because you're getting an, a well rested night of sleep. You're not going to have a whole bunch of eye bags, or wrinkles and stuff like that. So sleep is also important for that. Sleep is like the most important thing ever when it comes to recovery, no matter if it's for your looks, your body, whatever, you need good sleep. So I'm sleeping seven to nine hours at night. And then you want to follow a fitness routine that you can consistently and sustainably implement in your everyday life and make it a lifestyle so that you're consistently progressing. I only work out two to three times a week as far as lifting. And then the rest of my time I'm spending doing Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. And I'll link down below the fitness routine 
that I use personally in my everyday life, just in case you're interested. So now at this point, the full looks maxing guy, we cover the face, we cover the body. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive into fashion and accessories. Now, as far as fashion goes, fashion is always going to come down to your personal preference and style that is congruent with your personality. But regardless of style, regardless of the clothes that you wear, the only way that you're going to look good in clothes is that if you're fit, you're in shape, you're lean, which is why we covered the whole pillar about building your body and getting that lean aesthetic physique, you're going to look good regardless of what type of clothes you wear, regardless if they're expensive, luxurious brands or not. I'm not wearing anything insane, but because I'm in shape, because I'm lean and I'm wearing fitted and tailored clothing, the clothing is highlighting my strengths. They're accentuating my body and just making me look even better. Like you can see my chest poking out right here. You can see the shirt hugging my shoulders, especially with this Henley right here. You can see the shoulder definition, my upper chest, obviously hugging my biceps. And then with this shirt right here, it's showcasing more of my upper chest. And this actually plays into sex appeal, which we'll talk more about in this pillar. But this is how you're going to ultimately stand out from other men and look your absolute best. Now, you may be like, Jordan, that's awesome, but I don't really have a preferred look or style. If you don't have a preferred look or style, or, or you just simply don't know what would look good on you, this is what I would suggest that you do. I would find an influencer or a celebrity whose fashion or style that you like, and I would just simply model them. And you want to look for someone that has the same phenotype as you. So they're the same race, have similar features as you, because that's going to give you the best understanding of what that style of clothing that they're wearing would look on you. Another way you can actually go about finding a style that you like or finding inspiration is by going on Pinterest and searching different terms of looks and styles like streetwear, men's fashion, gentleman's style, etc. And you'll find different styles and looks that you'll like and you'll find inspiration that you can then start modeling for yourself. And the cool thing about Pinterest is that usually they'll have a link to the actual piece of clothing that you're seeing in the picture. So you'll be able to buy that exact piece of clothing and start wearing it for yourself. So that's what I would do if you don't have a preferred look or style and you don't know what to wear yet. Now, I believe the most important aspect of fashion is sex appeal. If you can increase your sex appeal, even if you're not the most handsome man facially, you're still going to kill it. And this is just going to take your, your fashion and your overall look to another level. And you can think of sex appeal as making yourself the most sexually attractive based on what you wear and what you reveal. Because keep in mind that you can only have sex appeal if you're in shape, you're lean, you have that V-shaped physique. If you're an overweight man that's trying to wear clothing that reveals certain parts of their body, you're not going to exude sex appeal. So you got to be in shape if you want to be able to actually have sex appeal. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about right now. I would suggest that you set a budget aside that you can dedicate towards getting a tailor and getting your clothes custom fit. And since you're going to be getting in shape, I would at least wait three to six months before you buy new wardrobe and get your clothes tailored because your body is going to be changing at least until you get close to achieving that V-shaped physique and go to a tailor because then your clothes are going to accentuate and complement your strong traits as far as your shoulders, your back, your upper chest and all that. And you're going to just look really good. And as far as wearing clothes that give you sex appeal, you want to be revealing as much as you can. So that means wearing just short sleeve shirts to showcase your arms, your biceps, wearing wife beaters, like how I'm wearing this wife beater now. And you can see my upper chest, you can see a little bit of my tattoo, which I didn't mention in this video, but tattoos is also a good way to enhance your sex appeal, but only get tattoos if you actually want a tattoo. And that's something that you truly want for yourself. You can wear Henleys, short sleeve button down shirts, which again, this is what I'm wearing right here. And just by me wearing the wife beater and you seeing my upper chest, I'm exuding sex appeal right now. And then to accentuate that V-shaped physique, you want to tailor the waist around your shirts and get a little bit of that extra fabric cut off and tailored because this is just going to make your waist look even more slim as well as getting your jeans and your pants tailored so that your legs look good. People can see a little bit of quad definition, hamstring definition, et cetera. And you can see my quad right here and you can see how the jeans are really hugging my legs, but they're also not super skinny. That's why you want tailored fitted clothing because they're just going to make your body look 10 times better. So that's how you enhance your sex appeal. Now I'm going to talk about what type of clothes I wear in the spring and summer months. When it comes to spring and summer, I'm wearing fitted tailored short sleeve shirts. Usually I'm wearing black or white or I'm wearing casual streetwear oversized shirts. I don't wear oversized shirts too much, but I do wear them from time to time. I just, I like the look. It's more chill as well as short sleeve Henleys and button knitted shirts. So this is a Henley shirt and my upper chest is revealed. So boom, sex appeal. Me wearing this gold necklace is exuding sex appeal, which I'll talk 
talk more about when we get to accessories. Then as you see, the shirt is just really hugging my shoulders. It's accentuating my delts right here and my arms. Like it's really hugging my arms. As, as you can see, you can see the veins popping up right here. This is what I'm talking about. And then this is a knitted button down shirt. This is similar to what I have right here. This is actually a shirt from Abercrombie that I really like. It's a off white knitted shirt. And these are the type of shirts that I wear during the spring and summer, as well as I do wear long sleeve dress shirts. So this is like a pink polo shirt right here. And then this is a long sleeve black shirt. It's called a yacht shirt and I got this from the clothing Kino clothing by Kino body and these two pictures were taken when I was in Florida actually and then when it comes to jeans I more so wear skinny fit to slim fit jeans and I do prefer to wear more street wear jeans mainly the colors I wear is either black or different shades of blue and I got these jeans from the brand collar clothing and then when it comes for shoes I like to keep my shoes pretty simple so I primarily wear Chelsea boots these Chelsea boots are from Odo Los Angeles I also like to wear low top casual shoes that I can wear with anything, which are like the Nike Blazer Lows, which I have these, or Stan Smiths, which I have these right here. And these are definitely gonna be good to wear with almost anything just because they're mainly all white. So these are the type of clothes and my fashion look that I have during the spring and summertime. Now let's go ahead and let's dive into what I wear during the fall and winter. So when it comes to the fall and winter seasons, I like to wear long sleeve shirts and long sleeve Henley shirts that are fitted and make my body look good. I also like to wear slim fit turtlenecks. I really like the turtleneck neck look it has like a gentleman classy sophisticated vibe to it that i really enjoy and also it keeps me warm during the fall and winter months i'm in indiana where it definitely gets cold it's also very good as far as just a nice style and then as far as jackets go i love wearing bomber jackets i love wearing varsity jackets leather jackets overcoats so right here this is a nice tan suede bomber jacket from abercrombie and then this is a black turtleneck that i forget the brand that i got it from this is a green and off-white varsity jacket from Abercrombie. And then this is a black leather jacket from the brand, The Jacket Maker. And then I have one of the black collar clothing jeans that I was talking about earlier. And just like in the spring and summer, I wear skinny fit jeans because my legs aren't huge by any means. So I can get away with it. And they're not skin tight jeans, but they're a lot skinnier, more slim fit. And I wear the same jeans that I showed you earlier. Then especially with fall and winter with snow and stuff like that, I like to wear boots. So I'll either wear Chelsea boots, like the Chelsea boots that I showed you, or I'll wear Tim's. I have the wheat and the all black Tim's. Those are my preferred boots. You always want to address for the occasion, the setting or environment. So if you're going to go to a nice restaurant, you want to look good for the nice restaurant. You want to look presentable. If you're going to go out to a bar, depending on the season, depending on the vibe of the bar, you want to dress more casual or put some more effort into your outfit. Like I was at a bar when I was wearing this. So that's what I'm saying. Just depending on the vibe of the environment and ultimately how you're feeling, you want to match your fashion with the environment. You you also want to wear clothes that complement and contrast with one another. And I don't usually wear more than two to three different colors. And as you can see right here, like this is just an all black outfit, which is actually a monochrome outfit, which is when it's one singular color or different shades of the same color. Like right here, how this tan suede bomber jacket contrasts with the black turtleneck, as well as how this white shirt contrasts with the green varsity jacket with the off-white sleeves. As far as the stores that I shop at, I like to to shop at Zara, Top Man, Collar Clothing, Father Sons, Kino Clothing, Abercrombie Fitch, and Ralph Lauren to name you a few. There's obviously other stores that you can shop at that have really good clothing, but these are the main stores that I like to shop at. So now that we covered fashion, let's go ahead and let's cover accessories. So when it comes to accessories, accessories are just a great way to make an outfit truly pop and increase your sex appeal even more. And if you really want to enhance your fashion and increase your sex appeal, I would recommend that you wear a nice watch wear some bracelets, chains, earrings, and rings. That's all you need. You don't need to wear all those, but those are the only accessories that you really need to not only increase your sex appeal, but really make your outfit stand out from the crowd. So when it comes to wearing watches, I would recommend just wearing a simple yet classy watch that you can wear with most outfits for any occasion. You don't have to have a Rolex unless you want to and you can afford it. You don't have to have super luxurious watches. Like I have a black and gold Michael Kors watch just like this that I wear with my outfits and they look good. Or you can get like a watch like this 
that's very clean, simple, a nice leather band, a nice white face right here. It really doesn't matter. You just want to wear something that is simple yet sophisticated can go with any outfit in any type of occasion. Then when it comes to wearing bracelets and chains, you can't go wrong with either rope or Cuban link chains or bracelets. So this is a gold Cuban link chain right here. And then this is a silver rope chain. Either style works. I'm more of a fan of rope chains, but I also like Cuban link chains. And then when it comes to earrings, I would recommend that you either wear a thin hoop earring, which is what I wear. Those are actually my preferred style of earrings, or you can wear diamond earrings, whether they're diamond shaped or round cut. So this is the exact gold thin hoop earring that I'm wearing right now. And this is an example of a diamond cut ring. Again, you can go either way with these earrings. Now you may be for getting your ears pierced. You may not be for getting your ears pierced. It's going to be a preference thing. But when it comes to earrings, it really just depends on how you feel about earrings. If that's something that you think would look good on you or not, I would just ask people like, Hey, do you think earrings would look good on me if I were to get them? Or what you can do is you can actually get the earrings. that have like the magnetic back part. I'm sure you can just order them off Amazon and you can get fake earrings and just see what that would look like on you before you actually take the plunge and get them pierced for real. When it comes to actual rings, I would personally just wear solid base colors with either little to no designs. It's just going to be based on your preference. I like solid rings and you can see right here, this is just a nice little solid gold ring, a nice solid silver ring, not doing too much, but yet it's still going to allow you to pop and have more of that edgy look to you. And when it comes to bracelets, just like rings, keep it simple. You can't go wrong with gold or silver as well. And like I said earlier, you can get a Cuban link bracelet or you can get a rope bracelet. At the end of the day, as long as you have some type of jewelry, you're going to look fine. When it comes to wearing accessories, a simple rule of thumb to follow, if you're white or if you have like more pale skin, I would suggest that you wear silver jewelry that tends to look best on white men or men with paler skin complexion. Then if you're more light skinned or mixed like myself or you're brown like Indian or you're black, I would suggest that you wear gold jewelry. Then online shops that you can go to buy jewelry and accessories are places like Vitaly, Jackson, Crafted, The Gold Shop, and Forge London. Then when it comes to my short kings out here that are, let's say five, six and below, I would suggest wearing shoes that will allow you to increase your height. So I would get shoes that have a one plus inch sole just to give you a little extra boost in height. And then I would even suggest that you get shoe lift inserts to increase your height anywhere by one to two inches. That way you can have a little bit extra boost of height. That's going to give you a bit more confidence and it's going to allow you to be more noticed and seen because you're obviously going to be a lot more taller, especially if you're in club environments, bar environments, you definitely want to be seen a lot more and be noticed. And when you're doing everything else that we've been talking about, as far as looks, maxing your face, your body, your fashion, your sex appeal, having the accessories, etc., you're definitely going to be getting choosing signals like crazy. So that is the fashion and accessories pillar of the full looks maxing guide. Now let's go ahead and let's talk about grooming and hygiene. I better not catch any of you guys skipping this. So when it comes to grooming and hygiene, you can do everything right when it comes to looks maxing your face, your body, improving your fashion, your sex appeal, all that stuff. But if your grooming and hygiene are off or you're not even doing the basic grooming and hygiene, none of the looks maxing that you would have done will even matter. So to make sure that you don't mess all of your hard work up, let's go ahead and let's talk about grooming. When it comes to grooming, more specifically facial hair, you want to trim and line up your facial hair, I would say two to three times a week, depending on how fast your hair grows. I line myself up two to three times a week as a sweet spot. That's what I would recommend for you. And if you can't grow a lot of facial hair yet, or you just prefer to be clean shaven and rock the clean shaven look, then I would shave it, let's say two to three times a week. Just you want to keep your facial hair or your clean shaven face as fresh and groomed as possible. When it comes to body hair, like chest hair, armpit hair, I would keep them trimmed and maintained. And if you're one of those men out there that you have a lot of back hair, dude, you got to shave that man. No woman, no dude has ever thought back hair was cool, man. At least unless you're like in the caveman days. So if you have back hair, shave it. They do have back hair shavers that you can use to do this. Just type in back hair shavers in Amazon and you'll see products that you can use. As far as your nose hairs go, I would suggest that you trim your nose hairs at least once a week or every other week, depending on how fast your nose hairs grow. As far as your eyebrows, you just want to keep them clean and maintained. Don't have any unibrows. Get a tweezer, pluck any unibrow hairs that you may have and just shape up your, your eyebrows. And then if you have any ear hair or you're prone to growing ear hair, you need to be trimming that like once a week. I don't have that. I know that starts to happen when you're getting older, but if you have ear hair, definitely take care of it. And then as far as like manscaping down there, right? Taking care of yourself down there, at least just make sure you're trimming yourself like two to three times a week, as well as clip your fingernails every five to seven days. Keep them clean, keep them short, keep them masculine. Cause as a grown man, like when your nails are getting very long, it just looks feminine.
in. So just make sure you clip your nails. So if you want to take it a step further and you can afford to do this, man, I would get like a, a manicure and a pedicure like once or twice a month, man. And, and I know some people are gonna be like, oh, that's feminine, that's girly or whatever. Dude, at the end of the day, we are competing with other men. And if you want to do everything that you can to level up your looks, man, go get a manicure, go get a pedicure. There's nothing wrong with it, especially if you're trying to look good for not just yourself, but the opposite sex. Anyone that's going to talk crazy about that is going to be some man that doesn't understand the importance of attraction and doesn't get any women. So I wouldn't trip about it. As far as grooming products that I use the Wall Edge Pro Bump Free Corded Beard Trimmer, it's very good. I like it. It definitely makes my lineups very crisp. The only thing I don't like is that it's corded, but that's fine. And they come with different guards. So I didn't mention this earlier, but when it comes to my facial hair, I trim my cheeks with a 6.5 millimeter guard from this Wall Edge Pro beard trimmer. And then for my mustache, I use the eight millimeter guard. And then I let my chin hair grow out like I told you, so I can have that forward chin projection, at least the illusion of that. And then like to the sides, like right here, as you can see with my chin hair, I'll use a 11 millimeter guard to blend in the facial hair with the 6.5 millimeter length facial hair. I'll do a facial hair grooming routine video for you guys to show you really how I do it. But that's how I go about trimming my beard and lining myself up. When it comes to trimming your nose and ear hairs, the product that I use is the Manscaped Nose and Ear Trimmer. It's a really good product. I like it. I like the, the look of it. It's very sleek. It's easy to use. You can get it on Amazon for 40 bucks. It's a little pricey for a nose hair trimmer, but it's high quality. It works really well and it's an investment. So that's how I would look at it. And then when it comes to your eyebrow, you simply just want to get tweezers and you can just pluck any unibrow hairs that you get or pluck any of the hairs that grow outside of your eyebrows. And then you can also get these eyebrow razors to really get rid of that excess hair and trim them down and look a lot more maintained, groomed, and presentable. And then of course, nail clippers. Everyone knows what a nail clipper is. So get nail clippers to clip your nails. And then when it comes to shaving, I just use the Gillette Fusion 5 shaver. It's really good, it's smooth. And then I use the Cremo cooling shaving cream. And this is when I'm manscaping and stuff like that. These are the products that I use. And yeah, very simple process when it comes to my grooming. So now that we covered the grooming pillar, let's go ahead and let's dive into the hygiene pillar. So when it comes to hygiene, you just need to be making sure that you are exercising basic hygiene, right? So the fundamentals, showering twice a day, brushing your teeth two times a day, flossing, mouthwash, wearing deodorant every single day, the basics. But when it comes to your scent, you must smell good and wear a high quality cologne or fragrance because smelling good as a man and wearing a high quality cologne is automatically going to make you more attractive and it's going to increase your sex appeal by far. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to break down the colognes that I actually wear that I get the most compliments for. The first one that I recommend is Salvage Elixir. So I'm actually giving away the secret sauce right here. I know a lot of people are like, oh, Sauvage, it's overrated. Everyone knows that Sauvage is good, but the Elixir specifically, in my opinion, is the best one. It's better than the original. So this is my go-to. This is my favorite cologne ever. I wear it dang near every single day and I get a lot of compliments from this. I remember recently a MILF tried to kiss my cheek and my neck at the bar that I go to a lot and she was drunk and then she was like, oh, you smell good. And I was wearing this. So if you want to attract MILFs, there you go. The second cologne that I like to wear is Coach for Men. It's a really good scent. I would say Coach for Men is definitely more of a fall and winter scent. It's really good. I just don't feel like it lasts as long. At least I can't smell it for a long period of time, but it may still last for other people as far as them being able to smell it on me. Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Men. This is definitely a really good spring and summer cologne. This is also very popular. I get a lot of compliments on this and you definitely can't go wrong with it. Next up, we got Christian Dior Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit 32. This is actually a cologne that my dad has worn for a long time. He put me onto it. And then Fahrenheit 32 is also really good. These are definitely colognes that you only want to spray like once or twice and no more than that because they're very strong, but they have a very masculine, sophisticated smell and they're definitely best for the fall winter. I get a lot of compliments on these two fragrances. Next up, we got Burberry Touch for Men. I recently got this. This is a pretty good, cologne. It's similar to the sophistication of Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit 32. It's a very masculine, more sophisticated gentleman-like scent. And then one of my all-time favorites is Jimmy Choo Man. Similar to the Coach for Men, I don't feel like this lasts as long as far as like me being able to smell the scent, but this is really good. This is a high quality fragrance. I still wear it to this day. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. The Dove 72 plus hour deodorant spray is a great option and you will get compliments on this. Quick story time. We do open mats for 
Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is just when spar for an hour and a half. And after I got done doing open mat, so I'm like sweaty, I got done doing like eight rounds of just pure sparring. And I'm shaking up with people, I'm hugging people and leaving the gym. A couple of the ladies that I train with, they're like, dang, Jordan, like you smell good even after rolling for eight rounds and after rolling for an hour. And that's because I have this Dove Men uh, 72 hour spray. This is a really good deodorant spray that I would recommend that you use. And then when it comes to moisturizing and nourishing your body, you want to use lotion and you want to use it like at least two times a day, one time in the morning, one time at night. When it comes to breath, you definitely want to have some type of mint chewing gum. I personally chew these Mentos Pure Fresh gum, really good gum as far as just keeping your breath clean, smelling good, and that freshness lasting for a long time. You can also use Listerine strips as an alternative. And then I use TheraBreath mouthwash, and this is really good at killing bacteria, bad breath, and just having that fresh breath. So like when you're on a date with a girl, you guys are getting close, you're getting intimate and you start to lean in, you can't be kissing her and making out and getting intimate and having nasty breath, man. That's just a no-go. And again, you can do all the looks max in the world, but if you smell bad, whether that's your breath, your body odor, whatever, all that looks maxing goes down in the drain, man. And as a bonus tip to wrap up the grooming and hygiene pillar, I would suggest I use a tongue scraper to remove bacteria off your tongue, which will also help getting rid of bad breath. And you can just do this once or twice a day and you'll be good to go. And you can get Get this off of Amazon. It's called Hoken. You can just put in Ton Scraper. This will pull up and you can go ahead and get it. So at this point of the full looks maxing guide to becoming a handsome and attractive man step by step, we talked about how to looks max your face, how to looks max your body, how to improve your fashion and level up your sex appeal with accessories. We just got done wrapping up the grooming and hygiene pillar. So let's talk about how we can implement everything that I talked about in this video so you can start taking the necessary steps that you need in order to fully look max and become the most handsome and attractive version of yourself. So here is my personal opinion when it comes to taking action on everything that we talked about today. And that is focus on the foundations first. Your face and your body are the foundations. Just like how you need a Christmas tree in order to then put Christmas ornaments on that Christmas tree. You need the cake in order to then put icing and cherry on the cake. The Christmas tree is the foundation to the Christmas ornaments. The cake is the foundation to the icing and cherry. So so the first thing that I would suggest is that you start improving your face because that's going to be the first thing that people notice and that's what they're going to be looking at the most. And then at the same time, I would be improving your body because especially if you're overweight and you have a lot of body fat to lose, then you need to focus on your body as well so that you can lean down, which will simultaneously help you improve your facial features and make your face a lot more attractive. But even if you are lean as far as you're skinny, you need to put on lean muscle mass and build that aesthetic V-shaped physique because you can have the nice face and be handsome. But if you don't have a masculine aesthetic V-shaped physique, you're not going to look like a true man. In my opinion, you're not going to look that masculine. But also, you're not going to be maximizing your looks to the best of your ability. So you want to make sure that you're focusing on improving your looks facially and getting that strong, lean, masculine physique. And then of course, during all that, you should be grooming, you should be keeping up with your basic hygiene anyways. And then once you start to really dial in your looks when it comes to your face and your body, that's that's when you can focus on the fashion and accessories. Now you can bring those things in because you built the foundations. So then I will start getting the products that I listed out in this video and start using them. Now, if you're on a budget, buy the essentials. Make sure you just have a couple of the skincare products that I mentioned, like at least get some type of SPF, a retinol and moisturizer and a cleanser. And then you want to get on a fitness routine that you can stick to for years to come. I've been using the same fitness program for I think eight years now. And it's an amazing program. Like I said earlier, I only work out two to three times a week as far as lifting. It's very sustainable. It's fun to do. I never get bored of it. I'll have the link to the fitness routine down below. When it comes to your wardrobe and accessories, I would wait at least for three to six months. And that's just going to be dependent on how much fat you have to lose if you're leaning down or how much muscle mass that you have to put on if you're skinny or skinny fat. Depending on how long that's going to take and how much you either have to lose or gain, I would wait at least three to six months until you spend money on a new set of wardrobe and accessories because you want to wait until you at least get close to that ideal aesthetic V-shaped physique. That way, once you get to that physique, you can then buy clothes that is going to fit you. And then once you get the clothes and the accessories, that's when you can start tailoring the clothing over time and really start wearing clothes that enhance your overall physique and just make you look more attractive. And most importantly, you got to stay consistent. It actually takes work to become handsome. It takes work to be an attractive man. And it definitely takes work to maintain your looks. And here's why you're in a really good spot because 90% 
percent of the men on this planet do not have the information that you now have after watching this video nor are they going to do anything to improve their lives is your ultimate competitive edge and that's why you want to implement everything that i talked about in this video you don't have to do everything at once but you do want to do them over a period of time and if you're feeling down on yourself because you're like jordan i, I know i i need to improve myself but i feel like it's not in the cards for me i don't feel like i can be a good looking man i don't feel like i have what it takes etc i understand where you're coming from man i used to feel the same way but at the end of the day you're more than likely not ugly you just haven't put the time in to really bring out the best version of yourself the best looking version of yourself is within you but you have to bring it out and that's going to require work regardless of genetics you got to put in the work it's like the quote goes hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard i had to maximize the genetics that i have and bring them out and without the work you wouldn't see the man before you if you do everything that i say in this video over a six to 12 month time span i promise you're gonna look so much better than you do now so the most important thing i can then stress to you is just don't give up man don't give up you got this you just need to implement everything i talked about in today's video be consistent at it and if you're consistent over a period Period of time you're going to accumulate a lot of momentum and you're going to accumulate a lot of results this is the full looks maxing guide to becoming a handsome and attractive man step by step i know it was very in-depth i know this video was long but i wanted you to have everything in your arsenal so that you can fully looks max and become the most handsome and attractive version of yourself i want to help other men improve their looks become more handsome become more attractive because you're just going to feel a lot more confident about yourself you're going to have a higher self-esteem and you're going to be a lot happier with yourself. You're going to feel a lot more fulfilled. And I know that may sound weird. It's like, how am I going to be fulfilled from being good looking? It's not just from being good looking, but that you put in the work to be a good looking man and taking care of your, your face, your body, your fashion, your grooming, etc. Because ultimately that's the highest version of self-love is by taking care of yourself, man. So I hope you got a lot of value from this video. This is my first video on this channel and I'm excited I was able to kick it off with you with this type of video. Stay tuned for the rest of the videos I'm going to be putting out on this channel throughout time. Welcome to the channel. Feel free to subscribe if you want to start improving your looks and becoming the most handsome and attractive version of yourself. I will see you in the next video. Take it easy, bro. Appreciate you watching.